Hello everyone, welcome to Classroom 2.0 Live for Saturday the 14th of November. Today's topic is an open mic session on productivity tools for teachers. Our special guests are all of you, everybody in the room today, and our facilitators, Paula Noggle. Your show hosts are Peggy George, I'm Lori Moffat and Tammy Moore. Thank you to Tammy for doing the closed captioning for us. And I'm going to go ahead and ask the newbie question for Paula, and she'll then take over. The question is, what is an open mic webinar? How does it work? And what are productivity tools? Thank you, Lori. Good morning, everyone. This is Paula Noggle joining in from New Orleans, Louisiana. So let's get to the newbie question. First of all, what is an open mic webinar? Well, it is a facilitated discussion of a topic. Today we are inviting all of our participants to raise their hand and take the mic and share as we discuss our favorite productivity tools for educators. Productivity tools are word processors, databases, spreadsheets, multimedia tools, which allow for individual expression. People bring information and ideas to these tools. Individuals use productivity tools to organize, manipulate, shape, and ultimately present ideas in new and creative ways. As we go through the presentation today, I'm going to share a few quick things, and then I'm going to open the mic, which means hopefully that you will click on the raise your hand icon, which is the third one, and then we will give you mic permission so that you can do some sharing, because that way we can add to all of our knowledge. So. Um, do you have any awesome productivity or time management tools? Well, we certainly hope that you are ready for our great share session. And so let me continue. <clears throat> All right. Nope. Okay, I'm not, oh, there it goes. Okay, so there's another definition of productivity. And then we found this, Peggy found this from Vicki Davis who um, in her blog wrote about what she is looking for when she's looking um, to, for a productivity tool. And we thought that this was very helpful, some um, guidelines that she uses as to whether she's going to add them to her toolkit or not. Because as I'm sure if you're like me, you check out a lot of things, but then you kind of put them on the side because they don't really meet your needs. But I love checking out new ones that I hear about and then seeing if it is a good fit for me. And sometimes something that works for someone else doesn't necessarily work for me. But I'm hoping to learn some great new ones from all of you today. Okay. Um, Web tool. I'm sorry, Web 2.0 tools are a wonderful way for us to increase our productivity. And they can usually be categorized into four types of tools, which are presentation tools, video tools, mobile tools, and collaboration community tools. So thanks to our great friend Shelly Terrell, who I'm hopefully you've heard present. We borrowed some of her slides because she had an awesome resource. And she was talking about these different ways that uh, we might use productivity tools for some of the topics that are listed here. So I'm going to start with the um, one that I chose first, which was, <clears throat> what do you do when you are planning your lessons? Where do you go? How do you get started? Well, these are a couple of the places that I like to visit first. Uh, Learn Zillion has an awesome library of lessons that have been put together by teachers. They call their dream team for both ELA and math. Um, I'm a discovery educator. We do have a subscription. So yes, I use discovery all the time. And then there are other uh, sites like Share My Lesson, where teachers upload lesson plans to be shared with others. So. 
says, I got you thinking. Is anybody brave enough to raise their hand and take the mic? All right, I'd maybe like you need some thinking. Okay. Well, since my, uh, since my talk button went on, can you hear me? Oh, okay, great. I just wanted to say I, I use um, planbookedu.com for my own lesson planning, but it's not, you can share with people, but it doesn't have something like, uh, it looks like share my lesson where a lot of people share things. Um, this is just for your own lesson planning and perhaps sharing with uh, other teachers in your department or something, but it works very well. It's very easy to use for lesson planning. So I thought I'd mention that one. Again, called Plan Book EDU. And thanks for sharing that. Uh, hi, this is Doug Henry, and I wanted to mention a uh, learning management system that I use with my third through eighth graders. It's by Blackboard, the same people who make Collaborate. It's a free system called Course Sites, and I'll put the uh, URL over in the chat. Is there any possibility? that I could dump a, a, a picture on the screen, just dump it into the white, drag it into the whiteboard. I don't want to wipe out what's there already, but I, I could show you some screenshots. Okay, well, let me try this. Um, this is my course site. It's online, and students can go to it anytime. Um, they don't really usually do it from home, but I would love if they did. But I have a, a course site course for each of the classes that I teach. Um, when students go into the course, they see a banner, a bunch of uh, menu items, and then typically the lessons for the week. And if they click on one of the lessons, it takes them into a variety of assignments. Let me get this out of the way here. <clears throat> so here's our November lessons that I did for the fifth and sixth graders. Um, it included attendance, uh, PowerPoint presentation that they're working on, and a couple of other items. Um, let's see what this gives us. When the student completes an assignment, they'll have some kind of deliverable, which in this case was a PowerPoint presentation. And in course sites, they can turn this in in the assignment. They can either browse their computer for a file to turn in, or they can make comments in a comments box down here. And those all get stored into Blackboard and I can grade them. Students can go in and retrieve their uh, their assignments and the like. This is what the grading center looks like to me. So there's all the students, uh, their login, and then each of the assignments becomes a column there that I can grade. And let's see. When a student has turned in something, uh, they get a little yellow ball in the assignment slot. And if I click on that, I can view what the student turned in. So here's an example of one of the fifth graders' PowerPoints. There's a little preview item in, in course sites that, let, that will read uh, Office documents, Google Docs, things like that so you can grade them as a preview. And the final thing I want to mention is that there's a pretty complete subset of the Blackboard tools that are available for free in course sites. 
And these even include a, uh, a version of Collaborate. So I could uh, conduct online sessions with a whiteboard and things like that. So, so I'm, I'm really sold on Collaborate or on the course sites. I was using Moodle for a long time, but we were having to host our own Moodle and it became pretty cumbersome. So course sites is uh, what I really like. And Doug, there are some questions about course sites. So while you're on the mic, would you mind answering them? Um, you, I think you did say that. Is course sites a, a, an LMS, a learning management system? Yes, it is. It's like Moodle and like Blackboard and like Canvas. Okay. It's a, it's a free version of Blackboard, basically. All right, so that answered another question. Was it free? Uh, do, do they have to log in? I guess since you've shared your screenshots, um, we don't have to go there. Um, let's see. Does a school have to be signed up with Blackboard in order to use course sites? No, no, we don't, we're not signed up for anything. Oh. Okay, well that's nice that you have access to a, a Blackboard system even without having the Blackboard. Um, and let's see. How does this compare to Google Classrooms? I have not used Google Classrooms. I've been okay. following it, but I, I've not used it. I think it would be more more LMS oriented. Mm -hmm. And um, I, Doug, I'm sorry. I, I just really want to thank you and I appreciate that. Uh, I cannot use Google Classrooms. I don't have access, and there are probably a lot of others that don't. So this looks like an awesome alternative. Thank you so much for sharing. All right, Peggy, how do I get back to my slides? I'm sorry. Thanks. There you go. Thank you. Thanks, Doug. Awesome. OK, and uh, Susie, you had your hand up. Do you still want to share? Okay, can you hear me now? Shoot. You can't hear me? Okay, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, I, uh, I wanted to share, I just had a, an article printed in a school library magazine that was mainly full of things I've learned from this group. It was, I called it Organizing Your Professional Life, which I use Live Binders because of what I've learned here. And Google Calendar is so important in embedding the calendars, like from this. And um, I use a lot of the webinars from EdWeb, but I noticed they changed their calendar. And I can't embed their entire calendar, but you can embed the individual webinars. And one tool I don't think we've mentioned yet is Voxer. And I don't know if I'd call it productivity or takes up a lot of my time. But I learn so much from different people on the Voxer groups that I'm in. Susie, thank you. Yes, Voxer is uh, one of the newer tools out and is great for collaboration. Um, I know that several people I uh, box with are in different groups and use it all the time. So thank you so much. All right, let's move on to what would we do when we want to work on um, social bookmarking? Uh, are you a Digo fanatic? Are you sucked into the Pinterest black hole? Do you like to curate on Scoop It? What are some of those things that you like to do to help you um, bookmark great things you find and then share them with others? Anyone like to raise their hand and take the mic? Uh, yes, it does depend on who we're sharing it with. Is it being shared with other educators? Are you sharing it with your students? Things like that. Nina, would you like to talk about Symbaloo? 
Paula, I would love to share on this one. Actually, I get excited about every single one of these slides, so I'll try to uh, restrain myself. But I love using Digo as my primary social bookmarking tool. And it, I actually pay for the service, which is very reasonable. I, I think I pay about $45 a year. But I like being able to use all of the various tools that they have. And if I'm getting bogged down with sites in my um, tabs that I don't really have time to look at at the time, but I want to save them, and I don't just want to save them in one tab. I want to save them so I can go back and add comments, etc. So I um, use Digo for that. And I'll click on the Read Later button so that it instantly saves it privately, but it saves it. Then it's really easy for me to go back and add my comments or my description, my tags, and then share it. And I also love that we can create create groups to share with. So you can have as many groups as you want. So if you want to just share with teachers at a grade level or teachers in your school or teachers that are interested in a certain topic, you can create groups just for that. And every time you add a, a new link, you can choose to share it with that group. So I'm a big fan of Digo. Thanks. Thanks, Peggy. That is awesome to know. Uh, Kim, your hand went up and down and up and down, so I'm not sure what's going on. All right, hopefully you have the talk button. Go ahead, Kim. Let me click it one more time. Oh, I was, as I started, I clicked on it and Peggy said what I was going to say. So just about groups, I, I like to send it out periodically to the group of teachers I work with. I send them out to admin. I don't know if they're reading them or not, but I'm seeing them or not. And that's just a quick way to share to specific people or to groups. So that's it. Thank you for sharing that. All right, let's move on to the next <coughs> item. <coughs> Kim, turn off your... There you go. Thanks. All right, so what resources do you access when you are storing your files or sharing your files? Are you... a uh, in favor of Dropbox? Are you, um, have you gone Google? Or are you a OneNote per type of person? Or is there something else that you have just really found that um, you would like to share with other people as far as storing and sharing files? Again, this could be with other educators or how do you do this with your students? Anyone like to raise their hand and take the mic? Hey, your hand's still up. Do you want to take the mic for this one? All right, Patty, take it away. All right, I think I just messed up and took away her permissions. Can somebody give Patty the mic? How about now? Okay, you ready? Go ahead. Now? Yeah, you've got it. Go ahead. Okay, so um, I'm not sure if you heard anything I said before, but I wanted to just say that I was a big fan of Dropbox. I don't use any paid version. It's all free, although I did get extra storage by, you know, um, sending out my links to other people who signed up. But um, one of the things, and I, and I am a big fan of Google Drive, obviously Google App School, but um, one of the differences I found with Dropbox and Google Drive is that um, I can open a file directly from Dropbox and begin to use it, whereas if you're um, 
storing something other than a, a Google app in Google Drive, you actually have to download it. So um, I'll give you an example. I use SmartBoard files, and I can create SmartBoard pages at home, throw them in the Dropbox, and then when I get to school, I open my Dropbox, and I and the SmartBoard app opens right away. I don't have to go through any download process. So I couldn't live without Google Drive or Dropbox. Thanks, Patty. I, I understand that um, that's a great way to have them work together. I think I forgot to press talk on that last one. Sorry. What is your go-to when you're creating presentations? Do you use Google Slides? Are you still into PowerPoint? Are you trying the nonlinear Prezi? Or do you have some other ones that you would like to share? Please take the mic and let us know. Oh, I'd love to learn more about Sway. Gary, you want to take the mic and tell us a little bit about Sway? <laughs> Melissa, I love that. I get a lot of people saying that Prezi's make them uh, give them motion sickness. I think you just have to be careful on how you do your layout so that you're not twisting and turning too, too much. Okay, I'm not hearing from Gary. So, is there anyone else that could give us some more information on Sway? I know it's fairly new. Uh, all I've done is watched a video on it, so I don't have any expertise on that at all. Anybody out there would like to share? Or maybe a different uh, presentation tool that you absolutely love? Okay, I see some people talking about Symbolo. All right, Peggy, take it away. Oh, I just couldn't restrain myself. <laughs> um, I like all of those tools that have been mentioned so far. I wish more people would get on the mic. Uh, <clears throat> But uh, when it was suggested to use Symbaloo as a presentation tool, it reminded me how much I love live binders as a presentation tool. Once you get your live binder set up, with all of the tabs on the topic in, in that live binder. You can easily do desktop sharing if you're in a webinar, or just share the entire um, link with people so that they can go access all of those things at the same time. But I love to do it and collaborate on um, application sharing, because you can stay right on that live binder, just click on the different tabs and they immediately come up so everyone can see what you're talking about. So I think it makes a great presentation tool. Thanks, Peggy. OK, Alan, it's your turn. Hopefully, you've got the mic. Hi. Can you hear me? Hearing you great. Go ahead, Alan. We can hear you. Click on talk again. Okay, I'm getting there. Perfect. Um, I, I know very little about Sway except that a colleague that works next to me walked into my office yesterday and she wanted me to take a look at what she had created. And to me, the biggest benefit of it was um, her presentation essentially um, creates a URL. So she was able to just send me the URL, and I was looking at her presentation. So to me, that's just to go right from presentation to being accessible online to anybody um, without having to post anything. You know, just great. Thanks, 
So you get a URL, which would be similar to what happens when you do a Google slide presentation, it sounds like. So that will be, make it very useful. Um, Thank you and, so and much. And, Go ahead. and the one caution was she was getting some kind of like, you know, there was some um, difference between what she was seeing in, you know, the presentation editor and then depending on kind of the size of the viewer's screen, it was sort of, you know, there was probably some, um, you know, kind of learning curve that you had to do to sort of make sure what you were um, publishing was sort of what you wanted it to look like for others. And I'm sure that there is a, a learning curve with that tool just like there is with everything else. Thank you so much, Alan, for sharing. I really do want to check out Sway more and I'm sure that other people in the room are glad that you got on and shared with us. Thank you so much. All right, the next one is um, when you are participating in social media, this is where I go to all the time to find resources, best practices, things that I can use in my classroom the very next day. And my absolute go-to is Twitter. I know that people have um, Facebook groups that they depend on. Uh, there are lots of people getting into Instagram, and of course there are dozens of other social media sites that would help you uh, with your productivity. So who would like to share on that? Nina, uh, Alan, your hand's still up. I'm not sure if you want to share on this topic, but if you do, take the mic. If not, we'll turn it over to Nina. Okay, Nina, it's all yours. Oh, wait, she needs a mic. Now, just press talk, Nina, and you can go. Uh, I used to have a Facebook account, but it was only for my personal life. I deleted it about a year ago. Uh, but I do have a Twitter account, and almost all the people I follow are people that I do not or never have met face-to-face but they have been extremely important to my professional development as a teacher. I find that very true. Uh, one of the things that I discovered, Nina, is when I was trying to help teachers get onto social me media, uh, they couldn't quite see the importance of it um, as a professional tool. So I would take them to some Facebook um, groups that I belong to or some Facebook pages and show them how they could use Facebook for their professional lives as well. Um, I haven't been very successful getting anyone else on Twitter at my school, but they do love when I share how to just do a search on Twitter so they don't even have to join it. They can just, you know, um, as we call it, uh, I can't remember think of the term right now. But they can just watch, you know, the different links being shared and get the most out of it that way. All right, Susie, it's your turn. All right, hopefully I did it right this time. Um, I learned something kind of interesting last week. I was at the school librarians convention, and the authors were talking about how they use Facebook now more to connect with their readers. And I thought that was kind of surprising. A lot of them use Twitter, but I'm noticing there are a lot more educational groups on Facebook. And because you can get uh, you can get pictures on Twitter too, but because the posts are often a little more in depth on Facebook, I think there are a lot more educational groups moving to Facebook. So sometimes it takes me a long time to get through Facebook. I traditionally do that in the morning before school because there are so many good things being shared on it. So I think there's a little bit of a shift. I still do a lot of Twitter, but I've noticed a lot more useful things on Facebook lately. Susie, I'm finding that too. Um, in fact, I was reading an article um, about a week ago, is, is Twitter dying? And I think that the 140 character limitation is off-putting to some people. Um, the way that you can now quote, add a quote, um, and then still have your 140 characters is helping. But I think uh, for deeper conversations, obviously Facebook just seems easier for some people to use. So thank you for sharing that. Yes, there are lots of groups, lots of different ways that you can 
do professional things on Facebook. Anyone else like to talk about another social media tool that they use? What about with your students? Anyone using social media with your students? All right, we're a quiet group today. Uh-oh. <laughs> That's all right. I know that um, with the, uh, the laws that are out there, some people get a little nervous about doing social media. But I really think that, um, you know, if, if you set up your um, AUP properly and are careful that social media can be used. I know a lot of my friends are using Periscope. And that one makes me a little nervous, but I'm learning about it. I haven't used it yet, but maybe one of these days I will use it with my students. We'll see. All right, so slides. Okay, so let's talk about saving time. Okay, we can always come back to lesson plan productivity or presentation productivity, but just to keep the the discussion going. What are some things that you use that help you save time? Okay. And one of the things that I wanted to mention was um, if this, then that. I, oh, close the link. Um, one of the things that I like about it is in the tag they talk about making the web work for you by creating recipes. They're called recipes. and and if you do a Google search for best recipes for IFTTT, you will find lots of different ways to put together uh, recipes that work. Uh, one of the ones that always seems to be um, brought up is that you can share a, a recipe, you can create a recipe that um, if your local weather forecast is calling for rain that day, you will get an email sent to you that reminds you to take your umbrella. From that to things like if you are using social media and you post on Twitter, then you can create one that automatically posts to Facebook or Google Plus or whatever other social medias you want. Um, every time you add a um, picture to Facebook, you can have it tied into your Flickr account so that everything is stored in the cloud. Different things like that. Um, and then another one that I like to use is Pocket. We are all so busy, we find great things on the web, but then we don't always have time to sit there and read it, and Pocket allows you to quickly bookmark it. It's got a little extension that you have on your browser, and you just click on Pocket it, and it's there for you for when you need it. So who would like to share some of their best tools for saving some time? Please raise your hand. Go ahead, Kim. Okay, because Peggy said I had to share it, so I do. Um, I love the timer tool. I just put it in the chat. It's timer.tab. And you don't have to have the window open, so you, set, you start the timer. And the time shows in the tab. And I know teachers like that, so you don't have to leave that window open. So you can have the tab open and still utilize it. So, that's my timer tab. The link is in our chat. Kim, I'm kind of confused. Wait, it's something that you is an add-on or an extension that's in your browser? Oh, thank you for making me explain it a little bit better. No, it is just a website you go to, and you start your countdown, and you start the alarm clock, and it shows in the tab itself, so you don't have to have the window open. So when you use other timers in order to see the countdown, you have to have that window open. This allows teachers to have the, that open, but they can open up the smart notebook file and kind of put it over. They're, they're able to see the countdown right in the tab. Oh, I love it. Please, can you share a link with us or how do how we get it? Because I use I an online timer. In the chat. Yep, Thank you, you so much. Uh -huh. Thanks. All right, Peggy, I'm sorry. I, I forgot I was in the moderator tab. Okay, so um, 
Oh, yes. Okay, we're, um, Peg, hold on to tweet deck just for one minute, okay? Let me get to the next thing, and then we're going to do things like tweet deck. Hold on one second. Okay, so we did that. Hold on. And moving into, okay, wait. And then, okay, let's see. Tammy, did you want to talk about um, time saving tool? Go ahead. There's a little bit of noise in the background, so sorry about that. I'm going to post a, a link to it. I know it'll work on the Mac. I'm not sure about PC. There's something called Clip Menu. And you know how when you do a copy of something, you've got that one thing on your clipboard, and then you could paste it somewhere? And have you ever had it to where you wish, oh, you know that thing that I copied three copies ago, that's what I need right now. Well, Clip Menu lets you keep a list of about 100 if you want to go back to 100. Plus, you can keep favorites. They're called snippets. So anything that you would copy, it could be text, it could be images, anything that you use, even HTML code can be put in there. Um, it's really great if you've got places where you just need to keep posting the same thing periodically. Um, so those, those things, that it keeps you from having to type a lot of stuff over and over again. So Clip Menu, it's really great. I use it every day. All right, thank you for sharing that. And Lori is telling us in the chat that Clip Menu is only for Macs. Yay, I'm a Mac user. <laughs> All right, so our next topic is how can we develop good habits and routines? What are our productivity tools that we use to help us with this? I don't know about you, but I know that when I get um, on my computer, I can sometimes get into a habit of staying on it much too long, and then I'll forget things that I have to do. So one of the things that I absolutely love is I use my Google Calendar, and I, I send, set up reminds to be sent to me. Um, they usually come through email, but if I'm on my computer, I'll get a little message down at the bottom of my screen that says, oh, you're supposed to be in this webinar in the next 10 minutes, things like that. So that even though I'm um, maybe gotten into Pinterest and checking out all the pins there, I don't miss an important meeting or date. And then another one that I have used and I need to get back to it. I am not a great list maker, but I think I need to use this tool more often than I have in the past. And um, it is called Wonderlist and you can set up all sorts of things to help uh, get your to-do list done. So Let's have you raise your hand and take the mic. What are some of the productivity tools that help you stay on track? Yes, Tammy. Actually, I was introduced to this one because I was doing some freelance work for illustration, and I'd heard that when you do freelance work, a lot of times the companies are paying you by hour. They want you to use Time Doctor so they can make sure that you're staying on their task and not going and doing email or looking at Facebook. So that's how I was introduced to it. But I'm finding it really useful. This is something that you might, you might find it useful as a teacher, but even more useful is if you hear from parents that I cannot keep my child focused on doing their homework. They're off playing games or off doing things they shouldn't be doing. This is something to recommend to your families too because they can have it put onto their students, their children's computer. And what it does is it monitors everything that they're doing and sends a report back to the parents. You know, originally, it's designed to send reports back to employers. But you can even link it up to PayPal accounts. So if you've got families that pay their, their children allowances, they can actually link it to their time on task, which I think is a nice thing. And uh, you can also set it up with projects, and then the students get the project so they can organize the stuff that comes in. And it's a to-do list built in. And it tracks the apps where they go to. It knows what, what pages they're on, how long they're on it. Um, it will remind them. It will monitor their activity. If it goes quiet for whatever period of time that you set it for, it will ask, are, are you working? It will put up a little message. And then they, can, they say, no, I was on break, and then it won't it won't give them a little uh, yellow bar that says, okay, you need to check on this to make sure they really were working. Um, so it's really, really good. It's called Time Doctor. I'll type it in. It's not free, but it's not too bad. It's $10. 
you, you get your own account free, and then whoever you're monitoring, it's ten dollars to get both of you. And I use it with my youngest son, which is fifteen now. You know that temptation's always there <laughs> to go and be off off task. And I find it useful because I sometimes get off task. I'll I'll wait for something to process, and then I'll go look at Facebook, and next thing I know, twenty minutes has gone by. So the little reminder popping up keeps me on task too. Uh. Tammy, they're asking, is it $10 a month or $10 a year? It is $10 a month. It is. It was designed for employers to use for employees that are off at a distance. So they're looking at a business kind of pocketbook. But for me, I find it useful because it keeps me on task as well as my son. So for some of your families, they might be that desperate to say, OK, I'm going to do this. <laughs> keep, my, keep my children from going off. Because you get the report, you see exactly where they've been. And you can also have it set up to do screenshots at whatever period you want while they're actively saying that they're busy on task. Um, so that also gives you a little bit of feedback to make sure they really are doing what they're supposed to be doing. Thank you so much for sharing that. Um, I, it sounds great, but unfortunately, I'm about free because my budget wouldn't go there. But for those that need it, it's a great thing. Great. Uh, moving on. I think that was the last actual topic that we were had. Hello, but Susie, I wanted to. Your hand up. Oh, I'm so sorry. That's Susie, okay. I did not, didn't mean to ignore you. Please, Susie, take the mic. Yeah, I have a question. Uh, getting ready for the Hour of Code, I have a lot of different resources for my students. And last year, I made a list leaf for them, because I like that it easily shows a picture or a logo. And I'm, I'm looking over my list of things that I want to share with my kids for Hour of Code. What tool do you think would be best that would give them a visual uh, that I could easily share with them for all these resources for Hour of Code? My top choice would probably be Symbaloo because my kids absolutely do love the visual effect of the tile web mixes, and they're you know it's easy to put together. Um, if you have a student who's um, good at um, you know finding things and um, can copy and paste URLs into it, you could even have the students create it for you. Okay, at this time, I would like to just open it up. Peggy, I'm going to get back to you about TweetDeck because I know you had some burning thing that you wanted to talk about there. But anyone who would like to share web tools, mobile apps, software, browser extensions, anything else that you know would help any of us in this room with our productivity, our time management, et cetera, please raise your hand. Peggy, it's yours. Oh, thank you. Um, I just wanted to mention TweetDeck as a time saver. Um, it's not only a time saver, it really helps me to catch those tweets from people that I really don't want to miss. If you just go to your page on Twitter, on the website, things are just flying by. And it's just impossible to catch anything. But if you use TweetDeck, and, and it's a free tool, you just create columns for those things that you don't want to miss. And then it separates them out for you. So it's real easy. Even if you have a lot of columns in TweetDeck, it's really easy to just scroll across that page and see what's new. And it tells you when they posted it. So if it says eight days ago, you know it wasn't a recent post. But if it says in the last 10 seconds, you know it just went up, and you can check it out then. I don't keep that open all the time, but I open it when I have time. And that's probably another tip that I would share, that don't feel that you need to always be checking Twitter or TweetDeck or any place where you save things like that. Just check it when you have time. And then have a system where you can really find the most important things so they rise to the top. And that's important. And I'm going to use the timer that uh, Kim mentioned earlier so that when I'm on TweetDeck that I will hopefully get reminded to um, get off of it and get back to what I need to do. I know when I first started on Twitter, I used a kitchen timer. 
and set it for like 10 minutes so that in 10 minutes I'd get off and get busy with my other work and get some productivity done. Uh, Katie, you're in the room and I want you to talk and share. So please take the mic. We know that you have awesome things to share on assessment, so if you wouldn't mind just sharing with us for a minute or so, it's all yours. Katie, we would love to hear from you. I Just click on talk. I think you can do that on your iPad and um, let us hear you. Okay. okay. She, well, she, well, she's getting set up. Um, one of the things that I have been um, learning about a lot lately is the browser extensions. Um, I use Google Chrome as my browser of choice, and I am constantly looking for great extensions. Um, one of the ones I just learned about this past weekend at, or last weekend at um, a Google Summit was one called Ghostery, Ghostery, and it was kind of scary when I first set it up because what it does is it tracks all of the, I don't even know what you call those things, the cookie things that get added on a website when you're surfing the web, and you can block them so that that doesn't happen. And when I first went on some sites, I mean, it would pull up, you can have the box pop up or not, it doesn't have to. But um, when, it, when it first did it, I'd get this column on the right-hand side of the page where like 17, 18, 25 things were blocked. And I was like, whoa, there's a lot of stuff going on in the background that we don't know about. All right, let me see if my buddy Katie is ready. Let's see if she got set up. Katie, you ready to talk? Nina, Spiros are awesome. I'm so glad you've got some for your kids. Um, do, would you like to talk about how you're going to use them? Tammy's got her hand up first. Go ahead, Tammy. Okay, well, we all know how handy it is to take screenshots. And a lot of us are probably still using the ones that are built into our operating systems. But if you have Evernote, you probably have learned to use Sketch. That's really helpful because you can annotate on it. So Sketch is a nice free one. And uh, that's another one I use all day long. I love it because I can write in, write in it, uh, draw in it. It's got arrows. It's got all kinds of tools. So you can annotate, annotate stuff. There's Sketch. We can get that one for free. Also, ScreenFloat has a specific purpose that I find that is useful to me, for me, and that ScreenFloat uh, will stay on top. So if I have something that I need to not get lost, it's especially helpful if you've just got a project where you've got all kinds of windows that are open, and you keep losing something way down in the pile. And so on that one, you can take a screenshot of it, and it stays pinned to the top. And you can also, it keeps a record going back in time of the ones that you have taken screenshots of, and you can categorize them. But mostly I use that one whenever I need something to stay on top and not get lost in the pile of windows. Thank you for sharing that, because I know you talked about that in our pre-session um, before we got started, and I wanted to learn more about it. So that's awesome. All right, um, Nina, you, I'm sorry, Nina, you have your hand up? Or are you wanting to share it? Did you forget to put it down from the last time? I'm not sure. If you don't want to share, I think my buddy Katie is now ready. Katie, click on the talk button. Uh, so disappointed. It's not working. All right. Well, 
we have gotten kind of to the end of our open mic session on productivity tools for teachers. If there's anything that you didn't get answered as we were going along today, please raise your hand and take the mic or type it in the chat room and hopefully Lori has been capturing that. If anybody is wanting to just take the mic and share something, please. This is it. It's your turn before we close out the show. The questions I snagged from the beginning I've asked already. Not so, Lori. I hadn't been checking lately, so I just wanted to make sure I hadn't yeah. missed any. Okay, thanks. Uh, am I turning it back over to you now then to do the closing since I don't see any hands going? Yeah, I think do so. I okay, okay thank you so much, everyone. This slide. <laughs> thank you so much, Paula. You are an awesome facilitator. And it almost feels like we need to do open mic shows back to back because people just start getting their courage up by the end of the session. But thank you to all of you that had the courage to take the mic and share with us. We loved it. And thank you also to those of you who shared in the chat. Um, and I will uh, save all of the links that you've shared with us today and add them to our live binder, which is already loaded with a lot of great resources. I specifically added some links in the live binder that are compilations of links. So if you see a Symbaloo link, you'll see a whole bunch of tools on that Symbaloo page. If you see live binder links, same thing, all related to productivity tools. So take some time to explore the links within the links in the live binder, and I know that you're going to find some great ideas. Well, I'm very excited to tell you that our show next week is going to be another featured teacher show. And the amazing Katie Ann Wilson is joining us. And she, if you know her, she is fabulous and has an incredible passion for augmented reality. So it will be a perfect time to see what you can really do with augmented reality for learning in your classroom. And she'll give us some guided tours and show us many of the things she's created and used in her own classroom. So that will be a great show. November 28th will be off. We won't have a show because that is Thanksgiving weekend in the United States. But we hope you'll come back on December 5th where we have the amazing Refrans Davis joining us. And we always will learn new things and get excited about the kinds of things she has to share. And she's just recently published a, a book called The Missing Voices in Ed Tech. And it's all about diversity. So I'm sure she'll tell us some of her ideas from that book when she shares with us. So I also want to remind you that the huge Global Ed Conference is coming up this week, starting on Monday for four days. There are hundreds of presenters, some amazing keynote speakers, and it's all free. Just sign up so that you can get the schedule in your own time zone, and you don't have to worry about when it's on. You'll know instantly. There are some amazing presenters. So be sure to take advantage of that. And everything will be recorded. So if you really want to see something, but it happens to be coming up in the middle of the night for you, go back and check out the recordings. They'll all be there. And Lori, back to you. Thanks, Peggy. The Learning Revolution Project is Steve Hargadon's latest endeavor. He's gathered together all his PD resources in one place, including the Host Your Own Webinar series. That lets you sign up for a Blackboard Collaborate room to host an event as long as you make it uh, public. It's a free event. You can nominate a featured teacher at this site. There's also a link in the live binder for the month in the resources tab at the bottom. 
as you exit the session, the survey should open up for Classroom 2.0 Live. You can also take the link from the chat box or get it from the Live Binder in the Resource tab. At the bottom of the survey, you can request a professional development certificate. It will now have your name on it when you receive it. Uh, please make sure, though, when you request this, that you use a personal email address rather than a school email address because school email clients tend to block this from getting to you. The video collection and audio collection of past shows also is in iTunes U. And you can get an RSS feed of the show archives, as well, of course, as the full recordings from the website. Special thanks to Steve Hargadon, the founder of Classroom 2.0, Teacher 2.0, Future of Education and the Learning Revolution, to Blackboard Collaborate for our webinar platform, and to everyone who participated in the show today, thank you so much for coming.